food. Okay, let's go to the shop. This is one of those dumb little projects that is just kind of fun to bang out in an afternoon. It uh, ended up actually taking me a bit more than an afternoon because I was experimenting and playing with new things and trying things out. Uh, I was trying to figure out what wood I want to use it out. There were a lot of scrap pieces that uh, just wouldn't fit other things. And this is going to be made out of a few smaller pieces, so this one is um, bent and a bit more of a potato chip, but that's perfectly fine for what I need here. Um, it'll be, if I remember correctly, it's 65 by 65 is the size of a napkin. And I need about 18 inches of board to make the three pieces, one for the bottom and one for either side. And uh, this is actually a piece of butternut. Um, it's kind of a fun wood to work with. It has a lot of uh, grain and texture to it. Not quite as uh, beautiful as oak. Uh, but hey, I've got to use it at some point, so this would be a good project for it. I'm going to start by cutting it to length, about 18 inches, and then uh, I'll rip it down to width. And that will be the, uh, the length is the, the size of a napkin plus however tall you want it to be. So how many napkins do you want in your stack? Um, so you can kind of play with this. There isn't any best or specific size, no plans to follow. It's just a chance to experiment and, and try new things. I use my uh, low angle jack uh, as, a, as a heavy ripping plane. Uh, it has a very heavy set and it can go through material fairly quickly. So that's usually the one I bring in after the scrub plane and I, I like keeping it set up for that. A little easier to push so when you're working through bigger shavings it actually runs pretty well. I actually want the grain to flow uh, down and around so it's a continuing grain all the way around this. So I'm going to lay it out to put marks in between and before I cut it I'm going to label them all so I know which one goes in which direction. Um, I'm going to cut it in the bench hook uh, because it's a little bit too wide to fit in my vise. I could cut it vertically but I just figured let's try the bench hook this time. So with the sash saw it slices it down pretty quickly and now we have three pieces. Uh, now we actually want to go through and miter the corners on these so that they fit in. I thought about doing a dovetail. Uh, there's lots of other things you could do and in this case there is no structural necessity for doing a dovetail or anything like that. A dovetail would actually be a little bit easier than doing these miters. So I thought let's try something a little different and at this point I'm planning on just doing a miter with a couple splines thrown in and, and call it good. And uh, miters are, are really fun to try and do freehand, um, especially in, uh, in, in wood like this. Um, so I'm actually going to mark around it and then just plane it down to the marks. It's pretty much that simple. Just want to make sure I clean out the, the backside so that I'm not blowing it out. So I'm going to plane that down close to the mark and then plane everything down all the way around. And that should get it really close to it. As long as your marks were set up correctly, um, you should be right at it. I want to bring in a miter square or an unsquare and check and make sure it is actually at 45 degrees. And then I'm also going to bring in a regular square at 90 degrees and make sure it's square across. And that way I'll know I'll have a good joint between the two. Um, I actually made it ever so slightly more acute um, than 45 degrees. And in doing so, it'll crush the corners together and give you a little bit tighter uh, joint on the outside. Next thing we're going to do is create the slot going down either side for the weight to slide up and down in. And this will keep the weight from being able to blow away, and then that weight can hold the, uh, hold the napkins in place. So I need to figure out how far down I want it to go. The farther down you make it, the more delicate the piece becomes. Um, the higher up, then that means more napkins. So I'm actually going to run a pre-drill through, um, and that will allow the snail to not be trying to bust this apart because I'm so close to the edge, uh, it's good to have a little bit of leeway on that. So I drilled the hole at the bottom, and this is what the weight will go down to. Now I need to cut the two sides of the slide, and so I can just bring them down until they intersect with that hole. And it's easier to cut them together as one piece rather than cutting them individually. Um, I'm going to be filing them out and cleaning them up so this actually works really, really well. I'm using a tenon saw, uh, but the wood was actually binding up on it. You can see here it's, it's just it's pinching in on the blade and I was having problems. You throw a little bit of paste wax on it and it goes phenomenally well. Um, this is just a simple, hard paste wax. It's the same stuff I sell in my store. And uh, it works really, really well on saws to make them run smoothly and cleanly. My first cut came out absolutely perfectly, right on the edge of the circle. And that second one, uh, not so much. So we had to do a good bit of filing to bring it back. A, a, a heavy rasp is a great thing to have in the shop, and it will fix a lot of errors. Um, I'm going to come in with a heavy rasp, and then go into a heavy file, and then into a medium file, and then into a fine file, and then into a really fine file. 
and I'm going to clean up the edges and try and get things close. Um, at this point, I'm starting to think that um, I, I've got to be careful at this because once I glue the pieces together, I'm not going to be able to do the inside faces. So I want to make sure that those are nice and clean particularly. Uh, but we might as well clean them all up. And it's amazing the finish you can get right off of a file. Uh, you can get a, a finish ready finish, um, smoothness, finish ready finish, yes, um, <laughs> and, and have a nice work all the way along. A good set of files and rasps is a basically a necessity, uh, particularly if you're doing any organic shape, knobs, handles, totes, things of that nature. Uh, files and rasps are um, just they're, they're a must have, and I've got quite the collection of them. And every time I every time I need to use them, I'm like, oh, I wish I had one in that shape or that size. So I'm going to do a lot of the little detailing thing now. Um, things all of the the chamfers on the outsides, making sure everything's a little bit clean because once I glue it up, those will be hard to do. Uh, particularly the chamfers that are on the insides of the corners, uh, they'll be more difficult to get at. Uh, it'll be harder to clamp this in place. So I'm going to come in and and um, plane down all of the corners. The inside ones, the little pieces, the chisel actually works really well to come in and clean out as long as you actually sharpen it. <laughs> and uh, then the inside corners that will be touching, I want that chamfer to come down the side, across the bottom, and back up the other side. But that means I have to chamfer it all before I glue it up. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do all the chamfering with the chisel, which is very possible, and I've done that in the past, but it's just easier to do it at the beginning. And, of course, chamfers are what se separate us from the animals. Now it's time for the glue up. And uh, it's around this time I start making some big errors that will come back to bite me later. Um, I was using five minute epoxy so I could glue it up and continue on with it later on in the day. And I was kind of in a rush because Luke and I were trying to get all the videos done. Unfortunately, I only had a little bit of five minute epoxy left. And I thought, mm, I think I can stretch this out. Um, <laughs> I really can't. Uh, number one, my, my clamp up was poor on it and I ended up with some gaps and I didn't have enough epoxy in there to fill the gaps and so the glue up on it um, was not as solid as I want it to be. Uh, foreshadowing. So we're going to start clamping this up and I have these little blocks that I 3D printed that hold it in place and uh, those keep it at 90 degrees and then I'll put squeeze clamps on the outside that will actually bring in the corners and tighten it all up. So the blocks hold it in place and then I'll have squeeze clamps, two going across the bottom and then two coming down on either side so that they're being squeezed into the, the corner. And then we set it aside and come back to it later. While it's curing up, we're going to start working on the weight. And for that, I have a piece of dowel. It's about an inch and a half. And I'm going to turn this dowel into basically a Lincoln log. It's going to have two notches on either side, on either end, that will allow it to slide into those long notches that we created in the sides. So I'm going to put tape on the saw to create a depth stop. And I'm going to cut down at the width of the wall that will be going on. Then I'm going to set a chisel on the other side and make sure that, that chisel is level. I want to make it obviously level to the top of the table. Then I can mark the other side and with the saw I can eyeball saw being level and cut in from either side there to come down and basically create that Lincoln log. I'm going to come in with the chisel and remove the waste in between. Uh, you can't really use a router plane here because you have the rounded surface. I could clamp it up in the vise so that the router plane runs on the bench top, um, but you really don't need to. It's amazing what you can do when you can freehand chisel. Once I have one end cut, I'm going to then mark the other end with the actual block, and then I can actually cut this whole thing to length so that there's about an inch and a half sticking out past the sides of the napkin holder. And then we can repeat the process we just did on the other side. I just want to make sure that the notches are parallel and coplanar with the first notches. And again, we can use that chisel trick, trick make sure that the chisel is level, and then you can, you can eyeball the saw cutting down level. And it actually worked really, really well. I, I made the, the marks on the saw to be slightly shy of where I want, so I can come back and clean them up a little bit better. It's better to not overcut. Uh, because you can always cut farther, but you can't always undo the cut. So we can test it, make sure it slides in. It's a little tight right now, so I'm going to come back and take a little more off, but that's basically what I want. I want to slide down in and hold the napkins in place. So I can shave off a little bit more, and then we can start doing the detailing on the end of this. One of my favorite things to do with a round dowel is to cut in chamfers on four sides so you end up with a square face. And it's a nice little detail, and it's very, very quick and easy, and uh, it's kind of sharp. 
Once that's done, we're going to come in with a file, clean up all the marks from the plane, smooth up the end, and uh, then we're going to hit this whole thing with sandpaper because we are going to be uh, coating it with boiled linseed oil. And the sandpaper actually will work the dust into the pores of the wood, and that will allow the, uh, the, the boiled linseed oil to wick into the wood a little bit farther. Originally, I was just going to put a few splines into the, the corners to secure the 45 degree miter corners. But I thought, mm, what if I did brass splines? This could look cool. And then I thought, well, what if the brass splines, rather than going through just the bottom and they disappearing so you only see them coming out the top and the side, uh, what if I actually had them go through the sidewall or through open air and then into the bottom? And this way you would actually see the spline on the inside. And I thought that'd be kind of cool. So we're going to experiment with that. And one of the fun things about this project is it's just experimentation. There are no prototypes. There are no plans. There are no designs. I'm just going to have fun with it. So I'm going to chalk this up in at 45 degrees so that I can drill level. I'm going to make marks on either side to where it should come out, and we'll see how well it actually does. Using the marking gauge to come in from the side, and then another marking gauge for how far down. We can then use the ring trick to drill straight across through one and out and into the other. And for most of these, this actually worked really well, and I came out very, very close to the mark on the other side. Um, some of them were off by about an eighth inch or so, but honestly, that's with well within the uh, the visual parameters. You, you you wouldn't look at it and say, wow, that one's out of, out of alignment. It actually comes out really, really well. Um, and I was very, very pleased with how the, the drilling on this um, was was far easier than expected. We're going to add a little bit of CA and then drive in the pins. And it's right around here that I run into the problem of, oh, did you just see that fall off? Well, yeah, um, I didn't have enough glue on there and uh, I had to go and redo it again. So I, I used the good glue and I had more than enough of that and we epoxied the snot out of the thing and clamped it up right and let it sit overnight and had more than enough epoxy dripping out of every pore. Um, so now it's plenty strong. <laughs> but that meant we had to come back another time and finish it up later. So I decided to, rather than pounding in the first set, I'm going to go ahead and drill all four holes first, and this would allow me to do some of the, the test work before we continue on. So I'm going to drill the two holes in the other side, and then I realized, wait a second, once I put these pins in, um, I'm going to run into problems of not being able to clean up the epoxy that's squeezed out on the inside. So I'm going to do all that first. We're going to clean off any of the excess that came off for drilling the holes, trimming that out, and then the epoxy. Uh, for the majority of the epoxy, I'm just going to use a chisel, bevel down, and carve it out. It actually carves out really well. Um, as, I, as long as I ride that bevel, it doesn't gar into the wood, and you get a really nice clean surface. And then I can come in with a card scraper and really detail it out. Putting it into the corner allows me to scrape the side, and card scrapers and epoxy really go well together. They scrape the epoxy off very, very quickly. So anything that's squeezed out one place or another, we want to make sure we get rid of all that epoxy beforehand. We want to get rid of as much of it as we possibly can because that's going to stop the oil from absorbing in. Um, and if you have it too much in an area, it can it can show up, particularly with a, an oil finish like boiled linseed oil. And I want to do all of the smoothing and trimming and cleaning I can before putting those dowels in because once the dowels go in, it would be much, much harder. Cool. There you can see I was sanding across the grain, uh, which isn't something you really want to do, but the sandpaper is actually a 400 grit, so it's not leaving any marks you would see. Now with that in place, we can drive the pins in. Uh, three of them went in perfectly, um, but one of them, I had drilled the hole before we re-glued it up, and that caused a problem when I glued it up, the holes didn't line up precisely. And so the pin went through one side and then drove into the wood on the other. And so I had to pull it out, reposition it, and put it back in. And that meant it guard up the wood on the inside, so I need to be very... Uh, very careful of that. But uh, with a little bit of persuasion and putting the pin in the right place, it slides out. You'll see the, the mess that was made a little bit later. So with the pins in, now we can do all of the final detail. It's basically done other than we have a lot of glue sticking out in other places and pins coming up. And here you can see the mess that I made from garring it up when it came through and, and ran into the other side. So we're just going to clean up as much of it as we can. And then the brass pins are sticking through the side. Um, I originally thought I'm just going to rasp them down, but I made them a little bit longer than I was originally intending. Um, so I found it was actually better to come in with a hacksaw and cut them down close to the height. And then I could come in with a rasp and take them down right to the surface. And then a finer file to clean them out. And then a really fine file. And then hit with some 400 grit sandpaper. And they really shine up nicely. Um, I, I love the, the brass accents on these. They actually came out very, very well. Um, that, that's something I'm, 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 I'm really liking. 
I'm going to do that in the future. So before we actually apply the finish, we're going to hit the whole thing, all surfaces, with some 400 grit sandpaper. Let that uh, let that dust soak into Time the pores, the and then of course homemade boiled linseed oil. What Not else would I put on it? Yeah, uh, for something like this, I probably could put something else, um, but this is kind of an experiment and something fun, and so I want to use a, uh, a finish that I like on this. And especially with this, uh, the wood, it really comes out. You can see the, the grain texture that comes out uh, with that oil, and it's, it's, it's happy. I'm going to put on the oil, let it soak up as much as it wants, put on some more, let it soak it up, and then wipe off all the excess, apply some paste wax, and... Uh, polish it off and it's done and just like that we now have a way to hold our napkins in place so that even when my son decides to bring over a box fan they don't blow away <laughs> yeah a fun little experiment project and a good way to waste some time in the shop and have a lot of fun is it perfect no but was it fun oh yeah uh, this will be one that i'm gonna like using for a long time happy so there you have it the world's most perfect napkin holder. So this is designed so that when this comes down, the brass pins actually lift up the corners. So if the wind comes underneath, it wraps it around the beam rather than trying to push them out, as well as lifting them up to make it easier to grab. It's just kind of like, woohoo! Um, otherwise, it's, it's really just kind of a napkin holder and any schmo could make one. Um, they're just kind of fun, and I really enjoy this one. It was very simple, easy to make, other than I just have to make sure I use enough glue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about doing regular splines on this, but with the, the brass inlay, I kind of like that and having that as a, a point to help lift it up. Um, I really like this, and we're doing a lot more picnics and things in the backyard, so this will help us um, quite significantly. So I hope you like this. If you have any thoughts, things I could do to make it even more perfectly better, let me know that down below. I do read through all the comments, and I answer as many as I can get, and that really does mean a lot. It actually helps out the channel, so if you want to help out the channel, throw a comment down below. Hit the like, comment, share, subscribe. You know all those things, they do actually help us out and they help the channel to grow and they help the algorithm and, well, you know how that works. If you want to take it one step farther though, you'll notice there's a bunch of people scrolling over here. Those are patrons on Patreon. They are the ones who are literally keeping this channel going. We are funded by you, the viewer, rather than by someone else who wants me to say something for them. I get to say what I want to say and build dumb things that I want to build and have a lot of fun with it. And I hope you like that. If you do like that, think about becoming a patron or becoming a member here on YouTube. You can click the little join button down there. We have special perks for both and we do have a lot of fun things we do with that. So I hope you like that and until next time, have a wonderful day. I may have had several problems along the way with this one with breaking things and putting them together, but I didn't blow it. My son did that.